This is lesson four of Unlocking Parametric Families. In this lesson, we're going to uh, make our vision door type and expand upon that original basic uh, flush panel door that we started with. So if we go to the open, to the uh, con uh, content course files, we can either copy that original door, that D1 flush door that we made, and make a D2 vision door type, or we're just going to click on 04 begin uh, to get started. So now that we're here, let's go to a front view, the elevation view. And in here, let's go ahead and start making some reference planes for that vision. We're going to use our RR shortcut to make some reference planes. And this is where the, the door will sit, or the vision glass will sit, excuse me. And let's go ahead and set some dimensions just for some placeholders. We want to constrain it from the top and, and know what the width is. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and make the uh, parameters. So notice that all that stuff that we did before is here because we copied it. So let's add a uh, vision width parameter. And additionally, let's add a vision height parameter. Simple enough. Now let's move those down because I want to try and keep things organized in here. So I have all my basic doors parameters up here and then these vision ones down here. Now, a typical vision width is maybe 4 inches or 6 inches. And a common one is uh, 25 inches on the height. And that's because uh, typical like fire safety glass in a vision door is, has to be 100 square inches or less. So 25 inches times 4 is 100 square inches. So let's hit OK. And now let's assign those parameters. Here's the vision height. That works. And then here's the vision width. That's good. Now what I want to do next is, because right now I can click on this reference plane and I can change that parameter, and I don't, I don't really like that. I want to lock where this parameter is in relationship uh, to that. So I want to set this at maybe uh, 6 inches. And notice that that vision width parameter changed. So we're going to have to flex that and figure that out. And maybe this top one is a uh, good 8 inches off the top of the door panel. Now let's go back and let's uh, update those parameters, 2 foot 1, 0 foot 4, and let's hit OK and make sure everything uh, worked out well. And this is still saying 8 inches, which is good, and 6 inches. Now let's flex this a little. Maybe if we change the door type, or the door width, excuse me, and hit OK. And notice that the uh, parameters did what they were supposed to do. The door got wider and the reference planes stayed in the right spot, which is good. Let's flex it back to 3 feet. Maybe let's change the height flex that up and that did what we wanted it to as well that parameter maintained that offset distance from the top and, and everything stayed there so great let's flex that back down and now let's go ahead and make the geometry so if in the last family if I had as opposed to making the geometry from the floor up if I had made the geometry in this plane I could simply click on this geometry and edit the extrusion and create a cutout but since I didn't do that and the geometry was on a different plane, I'm going to go ahead and create a, the cutout by doing an extrusion here. Now what I actually want to do is create a, a little bit of a bigger opening than what is just the specific uh, size because I want the glass to be that size, but I want the opening, the frame, to sit around that. So we're going to make some reference planes inside of this geometry that we're creating. So let's make four more reference planes and then let's set some dimensions to those. I want these to be a, a quarter of an inch uh, just nice and clean just so that that opening is barely past that geometry. So we'll set these to a quarter inch. 0.25 here and 0.25 there and then one last time and then one by one, I want to lock that, just like I did the uh, constraints up here. So I'll lock each one of these dimension strings. And now that I've done that, I'm going to click that square tool, draw my shape. And just like we did previously, I'm going to use the align tool to click on the reference plane, then the geometry, so that I could ensure that that geometry is locked to those planes. And I know that those planes, in a sense, are locked uh, to the parameters. So let's hit finish. 
I'm going to go back to my reference plane because I need to make sure the uh, this uh, extrusion widths work. Now notice that I can't see it. And the reason I can't see it is because it's actually above the cut plane. So let's maybe let's try a different view. Let's try this left view. There we go. Now I can see it. And it's not in the door. I want to actually align this geometry. Use my line tool again. Click this face and align and lock, align and lock. So now I know if I go back to maybe 3D, I can see that square is in there. But now that I've done that geometry, I actually want to cut this. I want this to be a cut. So if I had gone to the create, I could have made a, uh, a void extrusion. But the nice thing about Revit is you can, when you make an extrusion, if you go to the properties, you can change it from a solid to a void. You can't change it from a void to a solid, but you can from a solid to a void. And then once I've done that, I can use my cut function up here in the modify and create that cut, which works great. Now let's go back to uh, our elevation, and we'll start creating the glass and the frame. So now let's go to the Create tab. Let's do that extrusion again. And this time I want to make the glass, draw my square, and I want the glass to actually fit right on those dimension parameters that we made. So we can see those, and we're going to align and lock. And that's pretty easy. Now for this one, I know that the properties, I only want my glass to be like a quarter of an inch thick. So I'm going to go ahead and set these dimensions just like this. So an eighth inch on one side of that center line and an eighth inch on the other side. So if I go to that left view again, I can see that that glass is a quarter inch and it's right in the middle of the door, which is great. And what I want to do with that is assign a parameter to it. Now it's not going to have that door material, I want this one to be glass. So I'm going to say mat door glass because the door material will be different than the glass material. And that's good. If I go to my 3D, so this is looking pretty good. Now the only thing I'm missing now is a little, maybe a little frame to frame out that glass in that door. Let's go back to the uh, front elevation view. And for this, we're going to use a sweep. It's a little bit different. So let's do the Create tab. Let's click Sweep this time. And let's do that sketch path. That's the first option we get. And this is kind of like a, a follow me tool in SketchUp or just a sweep tool. We draw the path first. Let's align it to those reference planes that we created. So we're going to create a profile that fo follows this path that we're making. So I've made that and I've line locked it so I know if I flex this geometry again that that path is going to update with it. We'll hit finish. And now let's go to the left view because this is the profile. That first line you make is the profile. I can edit profile. We'll go to left and we'll hit that edit profile tool. And then what I want to do is I just want to draw the shape. So for this I just want to do a simple uh, shape that kind of aligns to this opening and to the glass. So we're going to make that shape for us right now. I got crooked there. Let's do this. And again, like I said before, I like to kind of draw the geometry off of the planes and then update it. So let's make our reference planes inside the geometry like we did before. And I know that I want this to be a quarter of an inch and this to be a quarter of an inch as well. I want that frame thickness to be just at a quarter of an inch. So let's constrain those, set the dimension, and lock it. Do the same thing over here, and lock it. And I want the quarter inch off of this back. So let's click on that reference plane one more time, quarter of an inch and lock it. And then maybe the frame part of this is maybe only uh, another half inch out. So let's click on these two and let's set this one to a half inch and we'll lock it finally. And now I can just go ahead and set up all these geometries to align with what I've done. It'll take a couple seconds. It can be a little bit tedious, 
But in doing all these techniques by utilizing reference planes, you're going to get a, a cleaner result that functions better as opposed to just aligning geometry. So I'll go ahead and I'll hit finish. And notice, notice now that I have this profile. Let's go to 3D kind of illustrate what this is. You can see this profile and how it aligns to this path. If I hit finish, I can see that frame is now swept around there. So let's go ahead and finish this out by adding this uh, last material parameter. I want this to be a frame material. So the door is going to have its own material. And then the glass is going to have its own material. And then the frame will have its own material as well. So let's call this mat uh, door frame. So material door frame. Hit OK and hit OK. And great. So now I have uh, the material set. I have the dimension set. I got the glass set. And if I go to a front view, let's do a zoom fit real quick and move this over. I can do a little bit of flexing, maybe change this vision height to four feet and see how everything updates accordingly. It looks like it's working well. Let's change this back to what it was. And we can update these width and height parameters again. And it looks like it's working great. So everything's doing what we needed to do right now. So let's go ahead and save this as the D2 type, D2 vision door. Hit save. And then in the next lesson, we'll make the uh, last door panel type. We'll make a, a full light vision door.